The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. Warning contains spoilers. Best categorised as horror sci-fi philosophy. When Father Emilio Sandoz returns from another world, everyone is asking how exactly did he become a depraved child-killing sex maniac? And what exactly befell the others who ventured out to recant with him thirty odd years before? Everyone but the priest is dead. Only the mutilated Sandoz knows what's happened, and he won't talk. But humanity really wants to learn the truth, and so it does, eventually. But not so fast. This is a story told largely in flashbacks to periods before, during and after the mission to Rakat, a planet from whence amazing radio transmissions had been detected. Transmissions of beautiful vocal harmonies in an indecipherable but alluring language, the first evidence of intelligent life around a nearby star comes in music. The music is first detected by an extremely tall misfit of a radio astronomer called Jimmy. This triggers the gradual building of an expedition based around his friends and colleagues. The priest Emilio Sandoz becomes the prime mover in the gathering together of these people. The mission falling into place in an unlikely manner such that he believes here at last is proof God has a purpose for him to lead his people in the first meeting of God's only other known children out there across the light years. An unlikely scenario, one might think. However, perhaps not. After all, it was Jesuits like Emilio who set off from Europe to spread the word across to the New World half a millennia before. So why wouldn't 21st century Jesuits be the first to contact with worlds beyond Earth? It helps that Emilio is a genius at language. If anyone can learn to communicate with the inhabitants, it would be him. And each of his friends has particularly suited specialisms. God's will, or was it? An asteroid is equipped with engines that will accelerate it at 1G for 18 months laughably slow where I come from, but it's a start. After that, it will turn and decelerate at the same speed. In this way, they will be protected from cosmic rays, use the asteroid as fuel and provide gravity for their journey. Such will be their eventual relativistic speed that decades will pass for those waiting back on Earth. The party of eight, four priests and four scientists, eventually land on Rakat a planet which is lit by three suns. They meet and befriend a village of creatures known as Runa. These are happy-go-lucky plant gatherers who bond with humans easily. The party stays with them for over a year and learns much of the Runa language and way of life, but they can find no evidence these creatures made the beautiful music which drew them here in the first place. When humans show the Runa how to build gardens, so that they need not wander far and gather plants any longer, it changes Runa life. For the better. Hmm. Or so they think. The Runa now become something like clangers on ecstasy and spend much of their days eating and having sexual intercourse. With each other, not the humans that is. But still, there is no music. Gradually, the landing party comes to realise there is a second sentient species out there the Janata. These, it turns out, are the originators of the music. Though they resemble the Runa in some ways, they have a much more sophisticated city-based society. They also enjoy the fruits and the meats of the planet. Suddenly it becomes clear the Runa are Janata property, in a similar way to cattle back on Earth. Human life was lost even before the Janata are encountered. The first character dies of some reaction, possibly to the food, 
nobody's sure. Others are murdered by rogue Janata poachers who mistake them for prey. Finally, all but two are killed when the Janata come to kill the children born to the village without permission, a natural result of all the recreational sex triggered by gardening. Gardening will do that, so I'm told. Eventually, just two priests remain. They become the property and dependents of a rapidly rising Janata merchant, Supari. To illustrate their dependency on him, Supari arranges for the humans to undergo a Janata ritual. They have their hands artistically modified to resemble vines around a tree. Skin and tendons are peeled away. The weaker priest dies of shock and blood loss. But then, he had refused to eat the meat of the slaughtered children. The tougher Sandos survives, though soon wishes he had not. To curry favour with an artistic poet, the Rashtar, Supari trades Sandos for social elevation and breeding rights. Emilio Sandos finds himself in a kind of menagerie, his hands useless but healing. He imagines he will end his days in a zoo. Just as he believes the worst has happened, he is summoned by the poet, the Reshtar himself. Whilst savouring the odours and the satisfactorily compact orifices of the human priest, in repeated sessions, the poet Reshtar and his entourage compose wonderful vocal harmonies which are transmitted via radio about the planet. Some of these even reach Earth. A second expedition arrives and finds the priest in his brothel. The traumatised and half-mad Sandos attacks the first person to open his door, determined to kill his captors or die trying. His visitor, it turns out, is a child interpreter from the Runa village, and he murders her in error. The crew of the second expedition report a brief version of events back to Earth before they too disappear, presumably next to be added to the harem. They are never heard from again. Sandos is launched back to Earth alone, mutilated, shamed, traumatised beyond reason, and doubting of any god that could have done this to him. He is virtually unable to speak and wishes only to die, but he lives on nonetheless cursed. Riley noting that not a sparrow falls without God noticing, but even if God exists, he never, never intervenes. There was indeed one real God in this tale. It was told from an omniscient viewpoint, and all events were arranged just so, as Sandos had suspected all along. That God? <laughs> that God was the author, Mary Doria Russell herself. The Sparrow, another Le Biblio cat favourite, highly recommended.